Welcome back to Who Chose. Today on Who Chose, we're going to build this. This is an ebb and flow, flood and drain, chop and flip IBC aquaponics or hydroponic system. Depends on your preference. At the moment, it's running on hydroponics, but in the future, I'm going to switch over to aquaponics, remove the system from my NFT channel, replace the reservoir for the NFT, and I'm going to take you on a journey through the world of aquaponics. I've grown a ton of food in this flood and drain system, and I've been really impressed with the technique. It's definitely more suited to some plants than the NFT system, especially those with larger root masses and larger fruiting plants that need more support. And it definitely deserves a look at for a place in your nutrient system. All right, I'll show you what you need to build it. Now, here are some things that I'll be using today. Jigsaw reciprocating saw, drill, uh, impact driver, plastic cutters or metal cutters that I use for plastic, some screws, um, some safety gear and a ratchet set just for the harder ones. I also used a pressure cleaner to clean it out and you'll need one of these, an IBC. You want to flip it on its side and slide the container out. Next, we're going to use a reciprocating saw um, to cut below the second support. Now we're going to drill a hole in the ICB tank as a starter hole for the jigsaw along the line that you've marked out already below this. To get all the plastic shavings, just run the back edge of some scissors along the side and they just come off like that. <laughs> ah. While I'm waiting for the ICB to dry, um, we're going to flip this cage upside down um, so that this bar is on the top and able to support the top half. So we have to remove this whole section by undoing all the screws and then flipping it upside down. And now we're just going to screw the base back down. Screw some self-tapping metal screws into a few of these bars to keep the base and the cage together. The top half of the container will sit on these two wheelbarrow handles and I'll be attaching these to the bottom of the, the top container. And it'll sit like that. Now we're going to learn how to build the most important part of a flood and drain aquaponics system, the bell siphon. The bell siphon allows the flooding and then subsequent draining of the growing media without any need to turn on and off pumps. The pump continually runs water into the grow, growing media. And once it reach, reaches a set level, the bell siphon kicks in and an automatic siphon is initiated, which then draws all of the water out of the grow bed. There are three main parts to a bell siphon. Uh, you've got the shroud, which keeps the grow media from entering into the siphon and then flooding down into the fish tank or the sump tank. Um, you've got the bell where all the action happens. Um, this is where 
the siphon vacuum is created. The water runs into the bell um, as the grow bed fills. And then the water then cascades down into this pipe and creates suction, which then continues to pull water until the water level reaches these two grooves in the bottom of the bell. Once the siphon's broken, the air rushes back in and the grow bed is allowed to fill again until it reaches the level at which the siphon is initiated, which is determined by this standpipe. All right, I'll show you what you need to make it. So what you need today is a drill, a reciprocating saw or a hacksaw, a jigsaw, and various PVC sizes and fittings of which I'll put up a picture on the screen right now. So to begin with, we're going to uh, put some slits in the shroud. So that's it. It's a bit windy here today. Um, so that all of the water can uh, pass through the shroud whilst also keeping the clay pebbles and uh, plants out, hopefully. So you want as many holes as close to the bottom as possible because that's where the last of the water will drain into. Now it's just a matter of uh, drilling two holes and cutting slits between them with the jigsaw. So this is what it should look like. That's the shroud. Now for this next part, we'll be uh, drilling a hole into the IBC um, with a hole saw to put through the bulkhead fitting. When drilling these holes, um, it's best to start the initial pilot hole in forward and then reverse the drill so that the uh, teeth on the hole saw bit uh, don't rip into the uh, plastic too hard um, and causing cause a tear because that's the last thing you want to happen right now. Also make sure that where you're putting the hole is the lowest point in the container. Um, it might not be possible with a lot of containers because they have dips on both sides, but uh, you may just have to make do with what you've got. You're also going to want to put a hole in the bottom of your shroud, uh, the same size as the hole you've done in your uh, IBC. And now we can now for what's probably the most important part of the assembly, um, the standpipe. So each standpipe will be a different length. It depends on how high you want the water to rise, because this is what determines the water's level. So um, I've cut mine just as an example, but um, I'll be adjusting this once I get all of the uh, grow bed media in here and um, I'll be lengthening it or shortening it because I've got more part there, um, depending on uh, how high the pebbles come up and I'll be um, leaving about two and a half to three centimeters of uh, dry media um, above the water level. Um, so. Once you've cut your standpipe to length, put it in there and then add the top, which just gives it more surface area for the water to come over the top of. And then you want to cut your bell to length, which will fit directly over and the water will come up and run into there. So on the bottom of this, you want to cut grooves, which I'll do now. Um, and that'll allow the water to come in the side at the bottom, rise up through uh, the bell, 
and then cascade into the middle. And once you've got the cap on, which will seal it, that will cause a siphon effect to drain the bed once all the water's pumped in to the grow media. Now, that's the full assembly of the bell siphon. Now, we're gonna clad the IBC so that no sunlight can get in and promote algal growth in the fish tank. We're also gonna seal up the cap on the lid of the IBC. And we're also going to uh, fill the grow bed with uh, hydrogen or clay balls, uh, which we will have to wash first. Uh, I think I've got about probably 300 litres worth to wash, which I'm not looking forward to. Anyway, here we go. I'll be using uh, some 3.2 millimetre or 1 8 rivets, uh, a drill with 1 8 bit and a rivet gun. So I'll be using these recycled shed panels, which I've cut to size and uh, riveted corners on. Let's go ahead and attach this to the uh, IBC. Fully clad and ready to go. Go ahead and seal it up. Make sure you use a aquarium silicon sealant um, that won't leach into the water um, and cause any problems. So here I have just under 300 litres of hydrogen. During travel, the clay balls tend to rub against each other and get pretty dirty. Um, so you have to wash them. That's a lot of washing. The easiest way is probably to use a wheelbarrow and a sieve. Um, the larger the sieve, the better. This is just what I've got at the moment. Um, but what really work well are those shopping baskets that you the plastic ones you get from supermarkets so uh let's get to it now if you haven't encountered hydrogen before there are expanded clay pebbles um that are kiln exploded essentially um and they're actually lighter than water so they float which is pretty cool. <laughs> Sieve number one. And so it begins. There you have it, guys. Grow is in. If we open the top up, being careful not to pull the whole thing off, um, you've got the bell, pull the, back, pull the bell out. And you can see, well, that's pretty good actually. So it might even take that down a little bit, but there's about two and a half centimeters be be between the height of the water and the height of the clay balls. Um, could probably go a little bit lower. So after your grow bed's full of media and your siphon's in place, all that's required is you add a pump that runs water from the bottom reservoir into the top reservoir and if you're building an aquaponic system you may also need a solid spill buff but that's it that's how you build a chop and flip aquaponics or hydroponic system this thing's produced a ton of food for me and i've been super impressed with the technique itself it gives a really good water to oxygen and nutrients ratio and the grow media in aquaponics gives a huge amount of biologically active space for biofiltration within the system all right if you like the video give me a like subscribe if you want to see some more and i'll see you next time on who chose